Hi everyone, thanks very much for joining me. I'm Dean, this is A Woodwork Journey, and today's video is a little bit different. Let me go into why. So I've wanted to make this video for quite some time because it's mainly the whole reason for this, the existence of this channel. I'm going to go unscripted through it. So I'm going to try and cut out a lot of the kind of the, the nonsense, but uh, stick with me because I wanted to be honest and real with, uh, with, with how I'm kind of presenting this as I do with all of my videos. This is how you see me on 90% of my videos. And this is kind of what I look like in my little workshop with everything all around me and this workshop is set out very specifically and I'll tell you why in a moment but um, this is how the rest of the world sees me like this with the sticks and also massive thank you to Simon Stevens Keynes for this bad boy I'll make sure that there's a link down below I don't use it all the time but um, I used to use it when I was going in the workshop but I dropped it a couple of times and damaged it so I don't want to do that this is my walking stick for best <laughs> but more often than not this is me with my wheels <laughs> the main thing is i use this for getting around because like i said even with sticks i can't walk very far at all and that means that um every time i go out which is pretty rare to be honest with you i have to have the wheelchair um I've got a Citroen C4 Picasso, which is a brilliant car because I can get loads of wood in it. <laughs> but I can also get my wheelchair in the front seat. But yeah, if you ever see me at a maker event or something like that, you'll probably see me like this. And so why is that? Well, it's because I have something called chronic fibromyalgia, chronic pain, and uh, a bunch of other things. I've got sort of uh, discs collapsing in my vertebrae and all sorts of stuff at the same time. So what that means, and you can always go and search what fibromyalgia is and all that sort of stuff. It's very, very difficult to find or very difficult to, to diagnose, if you like. But I've had it for um, nearly 20, no, just over 20 years now, and uh, take some pretty significant medication for it anti-cancer drugs and all this sort of stuff but it's um it's uh, to try and hold my um, immune system at bay because a lot of it sort of sparks off my immune system. Um, however, the chronic pain aspect means that I am in pain 24 hours a day. It just depends on what level of pain I'm in at any given day. That means that sometimes I can have a week where I can make maybe three or four videos and then other times I can have a week where I can't make any at all. Now, one thing I should point out is that I'm not making this video for sympathy or anything like that. I firmly believe that an illness does not define you. It's how you treat yourself uh, when you have an illness that does. And we can give in to uh, the things that try and take our power away from us, or we can try and work with them, around them, and, uh, and try and do stuff. Now, one of those things that I work very, very hard for is to be in here, to be in my workshop. And the reason for that is back in the day, I used to do a lot of uh, motorbike stuff and I used to kind of, I had a little tiny workshop and I used to uh, build stuff for my bikes and all that sort of nonsense. And I loved it. However, uh, when when my illness got uh, so bad that I could no longer ride and then I could no longer um, kind of work with metal anymore, I kind of had a, a couple of years where I was in, a, in quite the funk and um, I tried to express my creativity in other ways and I taught myself Blender on the computer and I really enjoy my product photography and various other things, but it wasn't quite giving me that kind of, you know, the, oh, the thing that I used to get when I was making stuff on the bikes. Now, none of this is to say that I was any good at the other stuff, but I used to enjoy my welding and my getting bike stuff together. And, and I had a sort of a, a 2010, I bought a brand new motorbike and within, within weeks, practically, I was ripping bits off it and remaking stuff and doing all sorts of fun things for it. Just now I've got some schmutz on the lens. Hopefully that's not causing me too many problems. Anyway, I'm going to carry on. I couldn't carry on without cleaning off the schmutz. We moved to a bungalow because I couldn't cope with stairs anymore. And um, 
and in part of that, this bungalow that we now live in is a wonderful kind of area of the of the county that's sort of very countrified. There's not really much going on other than fields and birds and nature, which is fantastic, brilliant for my positive mental health. But I've always struggled with depression. I've always struggled with um, kind of a number of challenges mentally for a number of other reasons other than just the um, just the the, the illness. Um, I'm not going to go into that because you don't really need to know. But safety to say that I found a lot of challenges. So when I wasn't able to ride a motorbike anymore, when I wasn't able to do the things that I could normally do anymore, when I wasn't able to take the dog out for a walk and all that sort of stuff, things became very, very difficult for me and I struggled. I struggled hard. As I said, I tried to do a bunch of other things that would help keep me kind of creative, but it just wasn't scratching that itch. So when we moved to this bungalow, um, I had I had a sort of a larger space garage. This wall here is actually a separating wall that separates my half of the garage from the landlord's half. And he stores a bunch of stuff and has stored stuff in there for years. I'd love to get hold of that half. But um, but yeah, it just means that I was able to all the stuff in here. I had family help me to clear everything out. And then slowly I just started building things and I realized that whilst I didn't really know what I was doing, I enjoyed it so much. I couldn't afford very much because obviously I'm not working. I'm not claiming disability, um, but I, I'm kind of, a, I'm, I'm very proud when it comes to that sort of stuff, as well as a lot of other people in a similar situation. Um, but it's one of those things where I wanted to do something that was creative, that would allow me to potentially earn money at some point in time and um, would keep me active. And that is the important thing here. When you're dealing with chronic pain or any disability or any any challenge, sometimes it's very, very difficult to just get out of bed in the morning. And some mornings I can't. I physically cannot get out of bed or I can't do things without assistance from my wife because my body won't allow me. I, there's a lot of days that I can't um, pick up a glass, for instance, a pint glass or a, or a bottle. I can't undo a screw. To, I can't cut up sausages, for instance, because my hands just don't work that much, that well. And it's very, very disheartening to have to ask my wife to do things like that because it's like a, it feels like I'm a, a child in that respect. And it's very, very frustrating. So instead of just dealing with that and going, yeah, OK, well, that's my life now. I wanted to get into here and say, right, let's be having it on days where I can. I'm going to do something. Now, that doesn't always mean I can do exactly what I want to, but it does mean that I can do something. And that's the important part. Like a lot of us, I do everything on a budget, as tight a budget as possible. And the purpose of this channel was to try and show begins. Well, it was going to document my journey as becoming a woodworker. But at the same time, it want, it, I wanted to inspire other people to be able to do the same kind of thing. Because the physical and mental, the physical, because I'm, I'm moving around more on days where I can. I'm not just kind of staying in bed all the time and just letting my body seize up and do nothing anymore. Um, but also um, mentally, I get to create something. I get to do something, whether it's um, I think making a hammer was one of my sort of earlier things that wasn't the best, but it came out. I still use it today. Um, there's a bunch of things that I've made in here, a lot of the work surfaces, a lot of the cabinetry and all that sort of stuff. And to be honest, none of it is overly fantastic. However, it's the, 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 the pride that I've got from doing that. This cabinet for this table saw didn't exist before I made it. And I'm so proud of myself for doing that because it's really helpful and it really does a good job. The recent video I did about the drawers for the screw holders and all that sort of stuff. Super proud of that. That's that's rather nice for, for me. <laughs> <laughs> but mostly it's just it's something that it, it's continuing my experience and my my journey, which is obviously what this channel is all about. Now, I don't know if you can see in this shot, but I've got kind of a, an avenue going down either side of this central island. And that's because I fall over a lot. My legs don't work. I also have a certain level of ADHD and um, I can hyper focus on things. So when I'm doing a job, I can hyper focus on that job so hard that I forget to eat, drink, go to the loo, the, the amount of pain I'm in, all sorts of things. I don't completely forget about the pain because it's always there, but um, my brain kind of minimizes it while, while I hyper focus on something. Then when I've stopped doing that, literally within half an hour, my body can start to seize up. 
and um, I quite often can't walk from the workshop to the bungalow, which is, you know, only a few feet, really, um, without the assistance of my wife. And I definitely have to use walking sticks if I do have a little wander about um, outside in, in, the, uh, in the area outside the front of our bungalow, because I cannot walk any further than, say, 15 feet something like that, 20 feet maybe, something like that, um, because my spine just cannot cope with it. That's why I have the wheelchair, and that's why the, um, most people will see me in, on the wheelchair, because I can't walk around, even with sticks. But going back to this workshop idea, I've got plenty of space for me to fall over and catch myself. You'll see me leaning on stuff all the time, not because I'm trying to look cool, but because that's the only way that you know, isn't agonizing and bringing tears to my eyes. So yeah, I lean on stuff just because it, it kind of helps the pain a little bit. <laughs> but with everything I've done from making this workbench through to making the cupboards underneath it, through to making all the cabinetry behind me, um, the French cleat wall and all that sort of stuff, I have tried to keep the cost to an absolute minimum because I haven't got the money. The same as the majority of you don't have the money to do things. So it's always nice to find affordable ways of getting a job done. You'd be forgiven for thinking that everything you buy has to be crazy expensive if you look at, look at a lot of the kind of, particularly a lot of the American woodworking channels. It's all kind of woodpeckers and posh table saws and this, that and the other. And while that's brilliant and fair play to them for being in that situation, that's not attainable for the majority of us. So it's very easy to put a mental block and saying, I can't do that because I can't afford the tools. The reality is though, that things like chisels and saws you can pick up at car boot sales for pennies, um, you could just spend a little time refurbing them. And as long as you've got something you can hit with, something you can drill with, and something that you can sand with and all that sort of stuff, then generally you're gonna be okay. So you can literally pick everything up from car boot sales. My table saw was a mega cheap secondhand deal because it's super old Axminster um, stuff. And I got it off an old fella who was selling it just because he couldn't use it anymore. My, uh, my bandsaw, mega old. My, um, my drill, I love this drill so much. And to try and get the drill or to try and get the bandsaw, today's prices with new gear, stupid money. But getting them, this I got for about 25 quid because it wasn't working. So I spent another 20 odd quid uh, a rewind company just sorting out the motor and then that was that was all good and then it's just elbow grease the bandsaw was probably a similar sort of price and um to try and get a bandsaw that has that same opening cut as as that old elu it's virtually impossible under a significant amount of money this is my hardwood store and all of that is reclaimed i've been given just a few pieces of plywood that's up there um, a couple of bits of sapelia i was given recently which is lovely but a lot of this is from people kind of just selling bits and bobs as they go or stuff that i've reclaimed from from um other aspects like i had a load of douglas um uh, uh douglas fur there you go um that I, I had from some old 1930s interior doors that I just broke down. And um, that's uh, given me so much, so much material. It was ridiculous. Recently, when I made the drawers for the screws, that was all out of a pine table that I picked up for free. So you can get a lot of this stuff. It doesn't all have to be hardwood for one. But second of all, you can pick a lot of this stuff up for next to nothing, if not nothing. So when it comes to tooling, what sort of thing do you need to be thinking about if you want to embark on a woodworking journey similar to mine to help with either mental or physical challenges? Well, I think that you do need uh, a power drill. Now, um, a lot of people will say that buy cheap, buy twice. And in all honesty, I think in a lot of cases you will anyway. My drill and impact driver was an Urbauer set from Screwfix. I've had it for about a year and a half and it's not let me down the screw, the screw, the drill. <laughs> this is the brain fog, you see, from the fibromyalgia. It makes words go all funny. That's why I ramble a bit. The Urbauer drill is kind of playing up a little bit now, but it's, it's handled things up till now really, really well. The impact driver, not been a problem at all. Now, if I'd have said, right, I want to go with... Makita or I want to go with DeWalt or I want to go with Milwaukee or whatever not that I would have done but um, up front then I may find out that whilst I do have a number of things on a certain battery platform they not not every company does every tool brilliantly 
So you'll find that as your woodworking experience progresses, you'll want different tools to do different things. And you may be on the wrong battery platform for that. Now you can buy some aftermarket adapters and that kind of thing, but that's not really ideal. I would, I mean, I've got, I've got um, uh, the Urbau drills there. I've got another um, Bosch drill, which I use for countersinking. I've got my Draper um, uh, pin nailer. And I've got a couple of other things that are sort of different battery platforms. So I'm getting to the stage now where I would like to go, I think probably to DeWalt or something. I don't, I haven't really thought about it that much. Um, so I can run everything off the same battery platform because that helps you um, if you are uh, if you are challenged like I am and um, you haven't got loads of different adapters to worry about and loads of um, things to find places to plug in and all that sort of stuff. My my memory is pretty horrific, so I can guarantee that if I don't put something on charge straight away, then it's gonna it's gonna not be charged the next time I need it, and that means that. If I don't if I don't charge up the Draper, for instance, I've only got one battery on that, so it's a it's a blooming nightmare. If you're on the same battery platform, it's super helpful, but you don't necessarily know that you need um, uh, a pin nailer until you get building stuff. You might not have to use one. You know, you might not use a circular saw. You might use a jigsaw all the time. I use a jigsaw very very rarely, so I don't really need a cordless one of those. But when it comes to these kind of things, you do need a screwdriver. I would suggest an impact driver as well. And I would suggest going with Torx screws just because, yes, I know ForgeFix are a company that look after the channel. But I've said as long as this channel has been going, as soon as I found these, um, in fact, there's a video, I think pre-Christmas video a couple of years ago, that um, I said that Torx screws were my absolute favourites because I can't press the um, the drill or the impact driver into the screw head as much as needed sometimes. And even with a posi drive, I've got a, a tendency to, to not put enough pressure in there and it'll just flick out and then camber out the, the, the screw head. And it's a, it's a nightmare. So um, torque screws stop pretty much all of that happening. So definitely go and check out them in the uh, in the in the description down below. I've got a link to Forgefast who are kind enough, kind enough. They don't pay me, but they do kind of send me occasional screws. So when it comes to coming into the workshop and working on little projects, I mean, just to show you a couple of things, my earlier things. This is just a little block that I put onto a stainless steel ruler, so I can undo that. And then I've got a stop block and I can use this to measure stuff. Makes life super easy. Very, very simple little project. This was the uh, my original mallet that I made and it still works. I can still take it apart. <laughs> which is nice um but uh but yeah i still love this hammer it's really really good um it when you get up close there's kind of there's gaps and things that aren't really ideal but it does what it needs to be done and i love using it when i come to this this <laughs> this i put this on my social media this is my um like hacksaw for doing not hacksaw um Whatever the thing is, when I'm doing dovetails, I can really cut this in because I've got a teeny tiny little blade in here, like a little coping saw um, or fret saw. And I put pictures of this on uh, on my Instagram and the majority of people just said, well, that's really ugly. That's horrific. I can't believe how shit that is or, or whatever. But I don't care about that because with this, this is a fantastic tool for, for cutting out the waste in dovetails. It just works. It looks garbage but it works really, really well. And that's all that matters. And so if you make some of your tools, it encourages you to use them a little bit more, you know, and then just figure out as, as you're doing things, what you can do on some days and what you can't do on others. For instance, I might go, right, well, I need to mortise out the hole for the head of the mallet. I'll get onto it and then I'll find out that I can't hold a hammer. So that goes away until another time. And I get onto another project, even if it's something like sweeping up the sawdust and the shavings and stuff from the uh, from the floor and leaving it tidier than when I came in. Even if that's all I can do on that given day, it feels good that I've done something. I've had a little bit of fresh air. And also um, the next time I come in, my job's that much easier because, you know, I've got less stuff kicking around. 
When we're talking about tools, one of the things that I will say is that cordless tools are fantastic. Now, again, you don't need to go through and buy every tool that a company has because you don't know if you're early in your, your woodworking, you don't know what you're going to need or what you're going to use. So, you know, odds are you're going to want to replace something anyway. But um, for me, the more things that I can make cordless, the better, because I, as I mentioned earlier on, I'm, I'm quite wobbly on my feet and um the less cables and leads that I have around on the floor, the better it makes my life. Even to the point of being able to have dust extraction up here. Yes, I have to go over to that section to turn off the blast gate or turn on the blast gate, but I've got that. I've got my little um, uh, remote there so I can do everything from turning off this light on and off to doing my um, uh, dust collection to all sorts of things. So, you know, that makes life a lot, lot easier. So cordless and removing all tripping hazards, or at least as much as you can, is the way forward. Also on the floor, by the way, I, uh, I my, my garage floor was horrific. Literally, if you dropped a hammer on it, you, you would cause a divot in the ground because it was awful. So I got a load of laminate floor for I think it was either 20 quid or it was free I can't remember and um, it's all laid down it's not laid down properly but it's laid down and it, it means that I've got a smooth floor that I'm not going to fall over the divots with or make the concrete any worse and it does a fine job is it ideal no did it cost me anything though not really you know, I said at the start that this was going to be unscripted. I don't know if I've covered the aspects that I want to cover, but really, I just want to reiterate the idea that an illness or an affliction or a condition does not define who you are. It's how you deal with that that does. And for me, I, um, I get a significant amount of joy and happiness from coming out here, whether it's doing something small and simple or making something like these screw cabinets, you know, it's anything that I can do out here just makes life better. It's more manageable. Um, when I was really ill over Christmas, I couldn't come out here for like a month or six weeks or something. And I was more depressed. I was more negative. I was, you know, unwillingly, um, I was, it was a lot harder to just exist, you know? Um, but coming out, it gives me a reason to, to, to exist because with the, with the pain and with the rest and not knowing from one day to another, or even from one hour to another, if I'm going to be able to move like now, if I'm going to be able to move in two hours from now, let alone what I'm going to be like tomorrow morning. So making plans is incredibly difficult, if not impossible. Add to that the absolute and total annihilating exhaustion and um, you've got yourself in a pretty dodgy little predicament, you know. But coming out here, when I can, um, it, it just helps. It really does just help. So in my videos, I ramble on a little bit. I also show more of the process than a lot of other people do. I show a lot of mistakes and I do all of that because I want you to know that first of all, anyone can do this sort of stuff. Second of all, not you don't have to be a professional. You don't have to be, you know, an amazing woodworker to create stuff that makes you feel good. And that's the important thing here. If you want to make things, the more you do stuff, then yes, you'll get good enough to be able to sell things and all that sort of stuff later on down the line. But um, when it comes to just looking after you, woodworking is an amazing thing for that. And um, I think if you gave, give it a try, you'll get hooked as much as I have. So I hope I can inspire some more of you to do something like this, not allow your illness or whatever you're dealing with to take control of your life. And I really hope that um, I can offer some level of value in, uh, in your journey moving forward. And uh, if nothing else, you can at least, if you can get past the rambling, have a good old laugh at how truly horrific some of my woodworking is. It's getting better though. <laughs> So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your time. And thank you to all of those of you that have um, subscribed and liked my videos in the last year and a half. Um, I'm blown away with how the channel is growing. And uh, yeah, I would really like it to, uh, to continue in that vein. And so I can hopefully help as many people as possible. Leave your comment down below if you're dealing with anything you fancy sharing or any tips and tricks that you've got for, uh, for coping with whatever you've got going on as well. That's always helpful for other people to read. 
Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you very, very soon. Bye-bye.